them standing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm so happy to be here with you. Yeah. And uh, I have a lot to share. And I hope, you know, basically I'm a trainer, a teacher. Someone who trains people to be filled with the Holy Spirit and also train on the Word of God so that we can share with other people, so that we can live in the love of God. Of course, I also revive people's spiritual life also, but uh, mainly I'm a trainer. That, so tonight, think of yourself learning this so you can apply to your life and remember it so you can you know, help other people to, uh, uh, to experience uh, the Holy Spirit and follow this useless teachings. Now you can see the red ball, right? Can you see the red ball? Okay, very good. Okay, now tonight I'm going to talk about God's love. How to live in God's love. Let me use a simple illustration. Has this happened to you or some people you know? Before they get married, the couple really fall, fall in love and they really like each other and they're motivated to do things for each other. And then after marriage, it seems that that motivation has gone down greatly. Now think for yourself. Have you noticed that when you first fell in love, you really were crazy for the other person? And then, after a while, after you get married, it seems that getting married is just doing a lot of work. You have to take care of each other, you have to do this, do that, and then a lot of responsibility, and then when you cannot do it, the other, your spouse will blame you. Do you have that experience, or did you see someone have that experience? You do, right? Now, what's the difference? The big difference is, when they fell in love, it was love. They really care for each other. They, you know, they experience the love from the other person and they are motivated to love the other person. But what happened is, after they get married, it's a lot of demands. You have to wash the clothes, you have to do this, do that, you have to do it well. And then, when people keep nagging you and telling you, you have to do this, do that, Sometimes you feel tired. You feel less motivated. Now that becomes the law. So in a time of uh, dating, it's like love. But then after marriage, soon it will become law. You have to do all this. And then you find that you get tired. You find that your motivation is not as strong before. Now let us apply it to our relationship with God. When you first Believe in Jesus. Some of us might be, you know, that we experience the love of God. We really, uh, we, we fell in love with God. We really say, wow, God is so wonderful. And then after a while, we always think, oh, I have to pray, I have to do this, I have to serve God, I have to give. And then it became law. Has it happened to some Christians like that? That even though we know we live under grace, but very often, we could be, you know, just saying, I have to fulfill all these laws, I have to fulfill all these things, and then it becomes a responsibility. And then people will lose motivation. That's one result. And the second result is that very often we feel, I'm not so special. God doesn't really love us so much. I mean, His love is real, but I just don't experience it. So for many people, they feel God's love is not real anymore. That becomes, doesn't become a motivational force. Now for me, let me tell you, I'm still strong, but I'm already 65 and a half years old. <laughs> and I'm motivated to serve God. I'm motivated to go to different countries. I want to, I'm motivated to, to write, do a lot of writings because God has given me a lot of good teachings. And I enjoy His love every day. I enjoy His presence every day. And anytime I think of God, I really like God. So my relationship with God is motivated by His love. It makes a lot of difference. Have you noticed sometimes when you tell your son, please do this, please take care of yourself, please do that, and they don't like to listen to us. But when they fall in love with a girl, suddenly, your son will do everything the girl tell him to do. But after marriage, not anymore. <laughs> but after marriage, she will say, 
This wife becomes like his mother. <laughs> keep nagging, keep nagging. So when people live under the law, it becomes pressure. But when we live under the grace of God, and then we can follow God's law with motivation. I'm motivated to take care of all my sins, all my problems in my life. I'm motivated to serve God, and actually I serve God for free. Even in Hong Kong, I don't receive salary. I thank God that God provides for me, and I don't want to get any more extra income. And I serve God just for free. I want to serve God. No, at my age, I can just relax every day. You know, I love tennis. I love watching birds. I can every day go play tennis and take pictures of birds and just walk around having fun. I can do that, but I don't want to do it. I want to serve God. I want to use the rest of my life because I'm motivated by God's love. And I feel relaxed because Jesus said, my load, you know, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. That if we follow God, it's easy and light. But you say, no, it's not light for me. Now today, I'm going to talk about the love of God. And hopefully, not only you can learn it, but you can say it to other people, to motivate them to live in the love of God. And it's very different from living in the law. Now, most people grow up living in the law. Since you were young, your parents say, if you obey me, you're a good girl, you're a good, child, good boy, and I love you. If you don't obey me, I don't like you anymore. They might not say it like that, but you might get that feeling that if you don't do well enough, then people don't like you. When you go to work, when you get married, actually people think of marriage as a place of love. It should be. But very often it is not. Very often it's you have to do this, do that. You have to provide for each other, care for each other. You have to do all these things. And then very often when people talk about the husband and wife, they would just say, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. I, no, it's boring. Some people say marriage is boring because they don't have the love anymore or the love is not strong. Let me tell you, I really want to build up a spiritual life of love with God and with my wife. Now she works so she cannot come with me to go to, to the mission field. But we take a lot of pictures. And in our pictures, our heads always stick together. Except when we stare at each other, look at each other's eyes. If not, we all lean our heads against each other. And when we eat, we eat with one hand. Where's the other hand? holding hands together. And when we sleep, we hold hands to sleep. That we always, that uh, there's always love. And I, I want to live like that. It's enjoyable. Do you want to live a, love, a life of love? And with God, no. When we believe in Jesus, we should be living under grace, right? But many people say, oh, I have to pray. I have to really obey God. It's very difficult. If we think of the law, Christianity has the strictest law. It's most difficult to follow if we don't have much love of God. But if we have the love of God, it's very different. So I hope that you will, you know, really put it in your memory and you can write down notes. You don't have to copy the verses, you can put down a Bible verse and then you can write down important parts that you want to remember. Well, let me tell you, there are different levels related to God's love. Let's read that together. The first level, knowing God's love. Can you see it? Okay, so let's read together. First is knowing God's love. Second, believing in God's love. Third level, strongly believing in God's love even in difficult situations. Four, experience God's love in prayer time and in daily life. Five, enjoying God's love. And then six, motivated by God's love. Now many people stop at knowing God's love. They say, yes, God, for God so loved the world. Yes, they know. But they don't really believe God loves them. They say, God doesn't love me that much. God loves my pastor. God loves the, the good Christians, not me. 
And then the third level is believing God's love even when their situation is difficult. You know, I have made up my mind if one day I have to face persecution, even if I have to be put in jail, I will still want to live in the love of God. And I always enjoy God's love. And I thank God for the experience of the Holy Spirit. I became a pastor in 1983. And in 1998, 15 years after I became a pastor, an evangelist laid hand on me and I experienced great power like electricity enter me. And I felt the love of God flow into me very powerfully. Immediately I cried for a long time. I felt so touched by the love. I said, I didn't realize I could experience His love like that. And then on that night when I went home, I just kept raising my hand to praise God and love God. And then every day, you know, I spend most of my day, whatever, wherever I am, wherever I go, I always say, Lord, I love you. Thank you, Jesus, and you're loving me. That I'm motivated by God's love. That I really see that God's love is good. And one day I thought about persecution. I thank God for that after experience. When I cried to Jesus, I said, Lord Jesus, immediately I feel His joy. And also I can experience His love. So tonight and tomorrow I will spend some time praying for you after the, uh, the meeting. The meeting. And that's... Hope you hope that you will keep the anointing. Every day keep the anointing. And then even when you're persecuted, even beaten by people, that we can experience God's love at the same time. That I made up my mind, even in a situation like that, I know God loves me. And whatever I do for God, whatever I do to glorify God, God is very happy. So I'm motivated to love God even when situations are difficult. And then number four, experience God's love in prayer time and in daily life. Now, for many people, it's very difficult. They think God is far away. It's like, it's hard to touch God. But let me tell you, the closer you are to God, the easier for you to experience God. For people who don't pray much, it's, it's very hard to experience Him. But when you open your heart to Him, you love Him all the time. It's very easy. For me, it's instantaneously, even in the middle of the night, when I wake up and I think of Jesus, immediately the joy will come to me. And it can come to you too, if you really hunger for God's love. And then enjoy God's love. Now, do you enjoy food? Do you enjoy food? But how many times when we're eating, we're thinking of what we do after we eat, right? When you're eating, right? You're just thinking, I have to finish eating and then I'll go somewhere and do something. But do we really taste the food? And when we taste the food, can you taste the love of God behind them? All this food were created by God. All the food were created by God because of love. So we can experience God's love every day. You look around, you can see God's love. Even when you relax and take a deep breath. You find that you feel good. Try it now. Close your eyes. Think of Jesus. Take a deep breath. Do you feel good in your body? That's God's gift. You know, God has done everything so well. He has put love in everything. Have you experienced the love of your mother and your father? That's all from God. Even the dogs, the cats, and the lions and the tigers know how to love the children because of God's love. So we can enjoy God's love. And then number six, motivated by God's love. That, that, uh, that we say, yes, I want to serve God. So I hope you'll go higher and higher in experiencing God's love and motivated by God's love. Okay, now Romans 8.32. Now here I'm going to go through some verses to talk about God's love. And and I hope that we'll all put it in memory. Let's read it together. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Now here it talks about Jesus. God gave his son Jesus Christ to us to die for our sins so that we can have eternal life. That's the first blessing here. And what's the second blessing here? 
how will he not also along with him? This is the salvation of Jesus. Second is he gives us all things when we have Jesus. Then he gives us everything. Now when we think about salvation, I was saved when I was 19. And God used different ways, different people to help me to believe in Jesus. And when I thought about the process, I really appreciate God. I said, God, you changed my mind first. You let me see some articles to let me think about God and let me think about the meaning of life. And then God brought some people to tell me about Jesus at the right time. Let me ask you, how many of you in your process of being saved, can you say, yes, God has used different people, different situation to help me. And God has worked in my heart to help me, to draw me to Him. If you can think of the process, how God has worked in your life to save you, can you raise your hand? If you think of the process, how God uses different people miraculously to bring you to Jesus, can you raise your hand? When you think of miraculously, how God has saved you, the process, was it a miracle? Not necessarily a healing miracle, but a miracle that God used right, the right people to help you so that you come to Jesus. If you have experienced that, can you raise your hand? Okay, raise your hand, keep your hand high. Okay. Now, when you think back at the process, was it, was it wonderful that God uses different people? I hope you keep this in memory. We did not seek God, but God sought us, right? We did not have the motivation to follow God right away, but God used different ways and changed in our lives so that we'll follow Him. And then after we are saved, do we follow God right away? Very often we don't obey Him, right? But He keep working in our heart, keep talking to us. So in a way, you know, in our salvation, God has worked actually all the way in eternity that God has chosen us. And then before we were saved, God has a plan how to work in our life. And then He moves in our, in our heart with the Holy Spirit. How many of you remember the time when you believed in Jesus? How there was joy and there was motivation to believe in Jesus that you feel you just cannot resist that? How many of you have experienced that? Could you raise your hand? that when you are saved, you feel this power of the Holy Spirit moving inside you, motivating you to believe in Jesus. Could you raise your hand? Do you want to give glory to God for that? Amen. That was wonderful, right? When you think about the process, you say, God, you love me so much, you keep moving in my heart. Now, many people experience that, they don't think over it a second time. They just say, well, it just happened. But for me, you know, actually, it started before that the experience of that, that evangelist laying hand on me. That I started to think about God's love already. But after I experienced the love of God when the evangelist laying hand on me, I started to think about God's love more. And I thought about the process how I was, I was saved. And I said, how wonderful that was. How God worked in my heart, changed my heart, and guided me. And when I, I remember the night when I raised my hand to indicate that I was willing to believe in Jesus, at that time, I noticed that I felt bright lights. I felt a great relief of burdens. I felt it's like ascending to heaven. It was really supernatural experience. And I thank God for that because of His love. Every time now, when I think about God's work in different areas, I say, God is so good. God, you're so good. Everything you've done for me is so good. That all the work of you is so good. So I hope when you think about your salvation, you say, Lord, you're so wonderful. Let me ask you, some of you have, some of you slide back, slip back, and then you did not follow God for a period of time, and then God drew you back. Has that happened to you? That God keep working in our life, that is the love of God. And then He also graciously gives us all things. Let me tell you, I have all kinds of blessings. When we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And I noticed that, well, let me tell you first, uh, my first wife passed away in 2008. At first I thought of just going to the mission field and just carrying the luggage and then just going to different places to do mission work. 
but God has provided for me the best wife, the best, you know, supporting partner for me. At that time, I just say, I don't want to handle family situation anymore. I just want to dedicate my life to God totally. But God gave me the best wife, not only that she loves me, but we really work together very well in our ministry, and it helps me a lot. And it's a great, great gift. And God also provides for me so I can go to different countries that I don't charge people for ministry. I just go there for free. And God gave me the power of the Holy Spirit and different teachings. And also God gave me the ability to understand and appreciate His love. The more I think of His love, the more I say, God, you are so wonderful. I hope now you listen to me not only with your mind. You don't just say, okay, I try to understand you, but you understand with, with, with your heart and with your soul and say, Lord, I want to really appreciate and understand your love. I want to live in your love. I want to be motivated by your love. Okay, next verse, Isaiah 49, 15. Okay, all the verses you can read together. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. How many of you are here are mothers? Can you raise your hand? Mothers, can you raise your hand? Let me ask you, has any one of you forgotten your baby somewhere when you go shopping? Then you say, did I leave the baby in a grocery store or a clothing store when I look for the clothes, I left the baby there. Did you leave your baby in a public vehicle somewhere? Did you leave your baby somewhere? No. Now when your baby is sick, even when you have to go to work, do you remember the baby all the time? It's just like your baby is in your heart, right? Then you just have no way to forget your baby. Here, the Bible, God uses this to illustrate His love. He's remembering us now. Now many people know this verse, but they don't think of, God is remembering me now. God is thinking of me right now. He's thinking of us all the time. He really treasures each one of us. Can you tell the person next to you, God really treasures you. You're the apple of His eyes. He really likes us. He remembers us, all of us. And when He remembers us, He remembers with love, like the mother remembering the child, but His love is much greater than the love of a mother. Do you think your mother's love is great? Is your mother's love great? Yes, it's very great. It's the greatest love on earth. Some people think husband or wife love is greater. No, no way. <laughs> it's not greater than the mother's love. My wife may be an exception. She really loves me. <laughs> I, I just say, God has given her so much love for me. I don't understand. It's God's way of showing His love to me. Sometimes she just looks at me. When we sleep because she has to wake up early, sometimes she just looks at me and I say, close your eyes and go to sleep. And she says, let me look at you for a longer time. She just show her love every way in every way. So I really appreciate her. Let me tell you, God is remembering us now. But many people don't think of that. Many people think of God as a principle, as a judge, just as a leader, not as someone who really remembers us and loving us. And this way, that way, will disappoint God. And also we won't be able to love God with all our heart. For many people, loving God is like a job. It's like loving, for many people, it's like loving their wife or husband. That they, they think their wife nag too much. For me to love a wife, some people, they say it's too difficult. Because they don't experience the love of the husband or wife. But when we understand God is remembering you now, you know, I have experienced so many miracles, not only when I pray for people. I myself experience miracles. And in all these miracles, I think of it through God's love. Let me tell you, a few days before I was born, 
my grandmother saw a man in white appearing to her before I was born, a few days. And I believe that that is a sign from God, showing, telling her that I'm not someone, you know, ordinary, that God has a wonderful plan in my life. And there were people, before they saw me, they knew me. They had a dream and saw me in a dream before they saw me. And one time I went to a home to visit a family who wish, you know, have, uh, to, they have idols at home and they have electric candles. At the time I pushed the doorbell, two electric candles burned out instantly when I pushed the doorbell. You know, when you really follow God and love God, God, really, His love will come to you. Actually, His love comes to all of us, but many of us have not received His love that much. That is why the Bible says, For high as the heaven is above the earth, so great is love to those who fear Him. When you really honor Him, fear Him, you love Him, His love will come to you more and more. It's like this. God's love is pouring on everyone, but many people don't have an open heart, and that is why they don't live in the love of God that much. I mean, we still have the love of God, but we don't have that much of God's love. But if you think of God loving you all the time, then your life will be different. When you say, God, you're so wonderful, you love me so much, I appreciate your love. When you respond to God like that, God will really respond to you. Let me tell you, there are people who God told them, please learn from Pastor Hill. Learn from his life. Now, I'm not being proud. Actually, I say I'm not worthy. God chose me when I was weak. I'm not worthy. But when we follow God, God honors us. And God will tell people to follow you, to learn from you. God will see your heart and then He will do wonderful things. And I want to share this. Not to say I'm great, I'm not great. I mean, I tell you, I really am not great. Without God's grace, I'm terrible. And even when I first, you know, believe in Jesus, and when I was first a pastor, I had many weaknesses. But one time, you know, there was one woman, I prayed for her, and I drove out demons from her, and then she started to hear the voice of God more, and she also went to heaven many times. And one time she went to heaven and God shows her the book of record of her rewards. And she was very happy to see that. And then the woman, because I've helped her a lot, she asked Jesus, can I see Pastor Yim's book of record of reward? And then Jesus told the angel to get it for, for her. And when she, uh, the angel showed it to her, it was thick, it was covered with gold, it also says on top, my beloved son, and then my name there. Now I want to tell you, I'm not worthy. I really honestly tell you, I'm not worthy. I've sinned many times. But when God revived my life, I say, God, you're so wonderful. Your love is so great. I don't want to disobey God anymore. So anytime now, when there is any kind of sinful thought came into my mind, in me I say, no, I don't want to sin. I don't want to destroy my life, and I don't want to disappoint God. I don't want to do anything to take away my relationship with God. So anytime when I have any sinful thought, for instance, if I see a very sexy woman, immediately, I would say, this will take away the relationship with God. I will turn my head away. I will stop having any kind of fantasy. Immediately, I will clear my thought and say, Lord, you're wonderful. You're good. You're wonderful. I don't want any sin in my life because I'm motivated by God's love. And I hope when you hear about how God cares about you, remember how God cares about you. And then you say, God, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah.